Hi everyone. So what I'm wanting to talk about in today's video has to do with nutrition and taking care of yourself. There's sort of a few things I wanted to focus in on at this time. Part of this has to do with living with a chronic condition, but it also has to do with the, the pandemic and essentially not co comfort eating. That is, if you've started noticing that you've been gaining weight, that you take steps now to try to bring a halt to it and then work backwards and lose a few pounds instead of letting it perpetuate and the stress that it puts onto your body, your organs and your knees. You know, one of the reasons why people lose weight so quickly at the start, especially people who are obese, is because there's so much water in their body and the internal organs just can't process it all. But if you start to diet, your body's playing catch up and getting rid of that weight. So if you think about it, you know, this is my bottle of water. I keep it beside me when I'm working throughout the day. That's what sort of comes out of you first. And, and the weight of water, the density of water makes the big impact. But it's the lifestyle changes, you know, after a week or after two weeks that will really make the lasting difference for someone that's needing to lose weight. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is suggesting that you put your brain in charge of what you're eating, both in terms of being sensible in the food you eat, but it's not just the food, it's also the portion size. So I know that there's different ways that a person can keep track of how much they're eating each day. I personally go by calories and I mean, you can eat all the right stuff, but if you're eating this, you know, huge portion of it, you're still going to be putting on weight and having more in you than your body's needing. So part of it is being sensible in the portion size and a very, very easy way to do this is to go buy yourself a smaller plate to eat off of because you won't fill that plate up as full or you know like proportionally if you have a smaller plate it's going to look like it's full and the psychological effect of that will help you not have the urge to put more food on but it's just as important to not be in the mindset of well there's only one potato left or there's only a quarter piece of chicken left it's still calories that you're taking in that ultimately need to be accounted for. So those are a few things that I want to start with. There's also being able to plan for how you're going to eat. And what I mean by this is sitting down or thinking over three or four days the types of food that you like and then what you can do to make them healthy and enjoyable. So what I would suggest sort of for the and enjoyable part of it is really thinking about what types of herbs and spices do you like on your food. You know, one of the tips that was given to me was to be using curry powder because the curry is a natural anti-inflammatory and of course, if you're using something that's natural and it's not been refined, you know, you're not risking the heart events, the heart attacks or the weakening of your heart with the risks that come with medication. No, I'm not downplaying when someone needs, you know, high blood pressure pills or whatever to do with the heart, but it's part of managing it and using what's medically warranted where it's warranted and then trying to do your piece of the part in taking care of your health and honestly it's amazing 
the more energy that you'll have if you're at a reasonable healthy body weight. I did want to take a minute and talk about the value of having enough fluids in you. I would encourage you, unless a doctor's told you otherwise, to be consuming a sufficient quantity of liquid with each meal that you take and with each snack that you take. The reason is that it takes water to digest food. So if your urine's yellow, or especially if your urine's the color of straw, you're not having enough liquid to process the food that's getting in you. And this gets in, into constipation and why some people will struggle with bowel movements. And if there's just not the fluids in you, when the time comes for the bowel movement, it's going to be much harder for you. So, you know, like I said, I've got my water bottle right beside me and it's very easily accessible. And, you know, I keep this mug. Oh, I just spilled some on me. Anyway, I keep this mug beside me and I just sort of sip on it during the daytime. And apart from just having the water there, being deep, being hydrated, it helps deal with the senses and the taste buds and your overall health. So what I want to say it is this way. If you go up in an airplane and you're going for a trip, while you're traveling, it's easier to get dehydrated in an airplane because of the altitude and the makeup of the air up there. And as a side effect of this, airline food becomes harder to make it taste good because your body's not in the optimal state to receive it. It's not hydrated to really gain the taste buds that makes food taste good. So it's simple motivation to be sipping on water, not to an excess, but to generally have your urine clear or very light yellow. And for what it's worth, when you have a doctor's appointment next, it would be worth talking about these things and the doctor's not going to be embarrassed. And, you know, even if you're my age, asking questions certainly is no problem and education's being empowered to address these things. Because at the end of the day, it's you that's responsible for what's going in your mouth and being able to speak up either for your needs or even if it's wants and trying to find ways that can make the wants be healthier. For example, having a smaller portion of dessert or limiting the amount of sweets that you take. Like if you go grocery shopping, if you go buy five bags of potato chips, that's what you're going to be eating when you get home. But if you get yourself a mixture of some fruit and even if you do buy some snacking foods, at least the fruit's going to be in your home and accessible for you to eat. If you're single and you find it hard keeping the fresh fruit in your house, there is flash frozen food, meaning, yes, it's been frozen, but the nutrients are still in it. So I've got a lot of frozen food, frozen fruits and vegetables, especially fruits though, for what I'm talking about right now, in the door of my chest freezer, or sorry, my vertical freezer. And it's there and it's accessible to be consumed where you're not worrying about it going bad after four days or after five days. You know, I've watched documentaries where the fruit's flown into the northern communities and you see them consuming strawberries that are, you know, past their best and starting to rot but that's what they have for fresh fruit. 
so you can get around that happening in your day-to-day -day life and the wasting money that goes with it with having it available to you. The final thing that I would suggest to you is something I did for myself in April of 2018. It never hurts to spend time one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian, even if it's just going to be for one or for two appointments, brainstorming healthy recipes, suggestions, combinations of foods that will taste good together. You know, I've watched different health shows where they're trying to help people either overcome food anxieties or move on with life. And, you know, they just set out little sample plates and the samples are how they figure out what a person might like. And sure, a small piece of carrot may be worth trying if you haven't had it for a while or that type of idea. Anyway, this is what I wanted to talk about in this video. I genuinely want the best for you in your lives. And part of that is trying to empower yourself and be able to take care of your needs. Thanks for this time that you spent with me today. Bye for now.